uh, cat shark 24, uh, the 24, uh, 24 out. Yeah, the 20 out, uh, the 24 out Viper. That's nice. Well, all right, Paco, we are live right now. You guys, I have Paco with us. He is here uh, to, to discuss, obviously, a monster hammer he caught in Texas. Paco, I really appreciate you being here now. Uh, I know you're a really, really busy man. You're one of the most winningest winners there is in land based shark fishing. You're a very well respected angler man, and I'm really, really appreciate you for you know spending your time and also you know discussing such a difficult subject to discuss, which is that hammer. It's a massive hammer. You know, it died. There's a lot of misconceptions, and I'm really happy that we had to cover it, man. How are you today? They're good, man. I appreciate you having me uh, on your show, man. I've kind of looked at it a, a few times, and you're doing a good deal. Uh, there's podcasts. There's podcasts everywhere, like you know, but not involving land-based shark fishing. So that's well, that's why you know I'm doing this because I love it, man. It's definitely not for the money, that's for sure, and it's not <laughs> for the peace of mind. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to help manage you know, and, and really highlight the good things about what we do, and I think that you know. There's a lot of misconceptions about land-based shark fishing. I believe personally, most of the people are great people yeah. uh, in what we do, man. And most of the people are, you know, they're really strong men, uh, usually, you know, with good principles, also women. But I'm going to dig into it, man. I want to start right away. We're going to jump into, you know, all, all the stuff. Now, the first question is a lot of people don't know you. If you're from Texas, we know you. We know how hard you work. We know how good of a fisherman you are. And we know how important conservation is to you. Okay. Yeah. I know that. But a lot of people don't know that. So tell us, how long have you been shark fishing, land-based shark fishing? Man, I started uh, shark fishing, land-based shark fishing, probably around uh, 1997, 98-ish, somewhere around there. Um, I started off of Bob Hall Pier, like most people do down here. Um, and then I went into the land as soon as I got my own truck. Um, so I've been really fishing the beach, uh, Corpus Christi area, South Padre. Uh, I've, I've gone on into the, the Matagorda area, but mostly my my deal is the Piedra Island National Seashore. That's where I, I like to do most of my shark fishing. But yeah, man, so I guess uh, about 20, 21, 22 years, somewhere around there. Dude, that is a long time to be land based shark fishing. I don't, you know, a lot of people don't know the the tolls that this, <laughs> the tolls that this sport takes on us, man. How hard it is. How we, you know, we'll put a lot of effort and money and time into something, and sometimes we won't even catch. So if I elaborate on on that exactly what you said. So a lot of people think I've retired. Um, you know, I, I get messages all the time where people, you know, I see comments. Hey, man, you you retired from shark fishing after the big shark? Well, no, I didn't. But like you just said, man, it puts a toll on your body. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not the fittest guy in the world and <laughs> I've got arthritis and everything else. So it's like, man, my body needed a little bit of a break. So <laughs> I went ahead and took that break. And, but man, I'll tell you what, this, this year I got the itch for it again. So we'll see. I'm happy, well, I'm happy to see you back, man. You know, just so just to clarify, you know, you've been land-based shark fishing for 25 hard years and you've been land-based shark fishing predominantly in Texas. And I don't, you know, I don't want to knock, you know, the whole Texas versus Florida thing, but I really believe because of, you know, it's, I believe it's a lot harder overall to fish in Texas, man. There and the reward is less when compared to Florida. So I believe automatically Texas is going to breed more land based shark fishermen, right? It's harder, it's more challenging, less reward. So if you really want to do it, you really got to push yourself. The advantage that we have, though, is our freedom. I mean, we have so much freedom to do uh, to do what we do. Um, so, you know, in other words, we're talking to, we're talking to an expert, and and you know, I, I think you're one of the goats, man. Myself, I don't want to get into a whole goat conversation, but dude, I just I love the amount of success you have, but I also love how you compose yourself. All right, so now the elephant in the room, Paco. I'm gonna bring up the picture right now, okay? Oh yeah. Now um, let's bring this up. Now, first of all, you know, here's the picture, you know that. You know, everyone knows if you're in land-based shark fishing or if you're on our page, land-based shark fishing on Facebook, you've seen this picture. Paco, how, you know, tell us about this picture. Obviously, you know, did the shark die? Tell us how the picture came to be. Yeah, man. So that's that picture right there is um, the one, the, the, the picture that went viral. I mean, it went uh, seven countries, articles, yada, yada. Right? So uh, it's also the biggest misconception picture that, that people see out there. Uh, so most people think I drug it out 30 feet into the sand, took a photo shoot, you know, smiling, yada, yada. Well, first of all, guys, that's not my mugshot. Um, after, you know, working hard at trying to revive it in the water, uh, you know, we had to do what needed to be done. Uh, so, you know, it, it was drug. I mean, you got to think it's over a thousand pound fish. You can't just drag it on 30 feet into the sand, 
do a photo shoot and then expect to drag it back and revive it. That's not going to happen. And it did not happen. That picked about about two hours after uh, the fish was landed. And uh, after about uh, 45 minutes of trying to revive it, it did not work. Um, so that picture right there was actually about two hours afterwards, man. And, you know, it's just one of those deals where you're looking at a, a, a beast, a Texas beast, a, a beast anywhere. Yeah. Uh, and, um, yeah, man. So, I mean, I, I, I took the moment to, uh, in case anybody's wondering, tip to tip on that head was 43 inches wide. That's unreal, man. I mean, that thing is, Paco, you know, that thing is is huge, man. And I'm glad you, you know, we, we cover that immediately. There's a lot of misconception, guys, that Paco did some photo shoot. Why was the, you know, shark dragged like that? Now, you know, the, Paco, you know, you've heard the term of pictures worth a thousand words. They haven't seen your picture. OK, your picture is worth way more than a thousand words, dude. There's so many people with an opinion. You guys you know, listen to what this man's saying and we'll cover it a little bit more, Paco. There was no photo shoot. He landed this fish and immediately tried to revive it. It died. He took a picture with it after it died, drug it up to harvest it, to give away the meat so he wouldn't waste it. And the guy's smiling because it's not a mugshot. I mean, these, you know, these are all things that make sense, Paco. But, you know, I, you know, I think it really, you know, really kind of just highlights the fact that, Public perspective and perception on what we do is important and it is powerful, yeah. right? So, and, and you know, and, and I really want to cover that aspect of, of what you did, you know, which is basically the courage to, to take accountability for this fish. But, you know, let's, let's talk about, you know, a couple more things. First, you know, how big was the fish? How big was this hammerhead? Uh, it's exactly 14 feet. Uh, it was exactly 14 feet? Exactly 14 foot, not, not an inch over, not an inch under. It was exact. I measured it twice real quick, you know, on the, in the water. I uh, measured it once we had to drag it back on land or drag it on land, I should say. Um, yeah, exactly 14 foot. Uh, <laughs> Tomlinson was there. Eddie Outlaw was there. Dude, okay. that's, that's the there and everybody was like, wow, that it, that is a legit 14 foot fit. So. That is a Paco, that is a monster, dude. You know, we we hate that it died, but, but dude, you know, we fish so hard. There's so many fish that die. Every, you know, everyone's lost a, everyone that is successful, all of the goats, all these people have lost a fish. You know, the, the difference is 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 like I said, it's the accountability, Paco. And that's why I absolutely love you, man. Um, what you know, let's talk about the gear. What gear did you use? What reel? What reel did you land this on? Uh, I'm a big fan of Avid uh down here in our you know area. Um, you know, we we, uh, well, I mean, they're you know, everywhere you fish, but it just seems to my opinion, it seems like I have to take them the most of it comes down to stand and all. Um, but it's like 80, uh, 80 wide TRX. Nice. So, I mean, you had, you know, you, you had a beautiful reel. What line, uh, what line were you using? What rod? That, and I was using 150 pound. I don't remember what the brand was, but, uh, it was 150 pound and it was, you know, with a top shot of about 400 yards of 250 spider wire. Um, uh, big fan of that. And I used the 250 on top spider wire, uh, just to help with the cutoffs. You know, we got the deep bars and all that. Yeah. Down. That kind yeah. of, it helps with the, with that. And the biggest killer, you know, most people know that the biggest killer for us down here is, um, current and seaweed. Yeah. So you're saying your top shot is 250 pound braid. You're using that to, because it floats off the sandbars. Is that right? Yeah. It, it, uh, to me, it, uh, it, it keeps it up elevated and also once you're in that third bar where they have to come over those stuff, yeah yeah i can really put you know the wood to it and, and get them over and what rod were you using what rod and what leader big fan of uh the uh 8655 jaw bones that uh that my, my rod builders are uh arch custom rods man i mean he, he does a hell of a job on them so yeah he does so so basically i mean what you're saying is i mean you had the gear you know you had the gear to land this fish there's really i mean there's not a lot uh, you know that you could have done differently you got a trx uh how much drag were you putting out do you think when it first started out i figured i had around um i was at strike and i figured i had about 50 60 pounds on it um it dumped every bit of 400 yards at that uh when i realized this wasn't just a hammer yeah. now, now you know you know four weeks before this one i had yeah cotton yeah release. It was huge. 
You yeah. caught, right before this, you, that's what I remember. Like, dang, Paco just caught this huge fish. And then a 14-foot hammer. Like, this guy is a winner. Yes. You're always winning, man. So, so, the, so it, I mean, um, when I realized you, it wasn't just a hammer, um, I went ahead and, and went about three-quarter. I figured, figured it, I had around, you know, when I finally turned them around, I had 80, 90 pounds of drag on them. And you had this in the, uh, on the, in the rack, right? Yeah, no, that's another thing that, you know, I've, I've, you know, when you, you're in land based shark fishing, you got to have thick skin, right? So people will say, oh, well, he didn't, you know, he doesn't harness stuff. He doesn't fight it. Well, let me explain to you, man. I've, I've had knee surgeries on both knees. Um, fighting from a harness kills me. Um, yeah. yeah. I, 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 w I wouldn't have been able to last the whole line, the whole, the, the whole time. So um, I just went ahead and left it in the holder. And I knew that at that point I can give it more. Um, and that's what I. So, and, yeah. and honestly, and, and Paco, I'm not one of those guys, man. I mean, you know, I'm not one of these hardcore. It must be this way. <laughs> the thing is, is with fi dude, we're dealing with the ocean and yeah. fish. There's many different circumstances, so there's nothing really universal, yeah. I would say. So, I mean, but to me, you fighting, and first of all, you did use the harness on that what 11, 12 foot hammer you caught right before this. So, my man. Yep. Don't discredit yourself, Paco. We're talking about a 14-foot hammerhead. I don't know. But here's the thing. Would you have even been able to put out 90 pounds of drag in uh -huh. a harness? So if anything, you fighting it out of the rack allowed you to put more drag on that fish to pull it in faster. Would you agree? Uh, 100%. So like the 12-footer, I figured uh, you know, I went three-quarter drag and, and brought them in just fine. This one, I went three quarter drag and it, it really didn't stop. Uh, so I'm thinking, wow, okay, we <laughs> weren't here. And it got to the point to where I thought if I go full drag, I'm, I'm going to break something. Um, uh, just because it just was that so much. much yeah. 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 And then how, how long was the, the actual fight? So the actual fight was, uh, one hour and 15 minutes. And that is, that was on a 600 yard drop. Um, and you know, then he dumped every bit of four or 500 yards. Uh, so I'm thinking a thousand yards, uh, total before I, uh, before I turned him around. So. Honestly, man, you know, I know we try to, you would know, try to land hammers and, you know, big hammers, especially in, in half hour under 45 minutes. But the fact yeah. that it was a 14 foot hammer, you know, a 600 yard drop that that's not, that's, that's a good job, man. Well, you, you know, know yards, a lot of people say, ah, it's just 600 yards. Yeah. 600 yards in 10. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, in Texas, we got several bars to go over, and not to mention our line can be broken at any time. So, do just you know, really amazing job. I've seen people that it's taken two hours to catch a six foot bull shark. All right, so you know, my point is, is you know exactly what you're doing. You had all of the gear. You did everything you could from the sound of it to land that fish. It didn't make it. So now let's talk about, um, you know, so you know, at, at what point did you know? the fish died and, and take us through, you know, how did you, you know, deal with it dying? How did you try to revive the fish? That fish fought hard all the way up to the third bar. Um, that was around an hour, right around an hour. Um, when it got to the third bar, I got it over fairly easy. And at that point I knew something was not right. Uh, so we went ahead and brought it in and, um, uh, quickly took a measurement uh, all four of us jumped in, took a quick pick, um, still in, you know, foot and a half, two foot of water and got the hook out and started the revive, you know, the reviving purpose. I mean, uh, job. And, and we knew, you know, that, that she was struggling, um, but she was still moving and we were, we thought we could revive it. And then, man, all four of us, 45 minutes trying to hold her into the strong current. You know, I mean, I was holding her from the head. Um, everybody did what we could. I mean, man, 45 minutes holding a thousand pound fish in the water, man. That just... So Paco, it's fair to say it, you know, it, it took an hour, right? Mm -hmm. It took an hour for that fish to even touch land, so yes. to speak, because it, it sounds from, you know, you're de-hooking, you're dealing and handling the fish. And I've seen the pictures of this in a foot and a half, you know, foot deep of water. Now, Paco, can you explain why you would endanger yourself like that? Is it, is it, a, you know, let me ask you a different question. How heartbreaking was it losing the fish? Man, I, uh, it got to the point to where the guys were like, man, we got to call it. I mean, we're done. We're sh shark crashed everywhere. We're tired. 
and I was still holding her from the head into the current, trying and just trying. And I finally just accepted the, you know, the the result. And uh, from there, it just it went from a uh, cloud nine to just in the sand, man, dirt. Just felt terrible. Just felt, you know, that uh, everything I've worked hard for, everything, all the the gear, everything was down the drain. You know? Um, but at that point, brother, I mean, I figured, you know, me and Timmy talked and like, well, all right, well, now we got to deal with a, with a thousand pound dead fish. Um, so many out there, you know, this Travis, I guarantee you half the people that are looking at this have dealt with it. Um, you know, so many people out there would have just cut the jaw out and ran hundred percent. And, uh, we, we just decided, well, look, I probably wouldn't eat that fish. But I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would. And uh, so we decided to go ahead. We drug it as far as we could, uh, which was still in about the weight gut. We could not drag it anymore. Uh, so uh, Eddie uh, went ahead and hooked it up, you know, and we drug it out with his truck uh, just because we couldn't do it by hand. And uh, we got to, uh, you know, trying to harvest the meat, man. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not. I'm not proud of this the situation but i'm yeah, proud yeah. Uh, i'm proud that we were able to harvest and cool down over 400 pounds of meat and uh, we donated it to a local homeless shelter you know and again i mean whether whether people say all oh, sharks not good eating well there's a lot of people out there that don't have really uh, much of a choice man so they were happy to get what we donated and um i it's funny man uh they they were good people to deal with timmy reached out to them um actually the homeless shelter yeah yeah so yeah, you may yeah. wonder you know how did you guys cool down 400 pounds of meat on well man we loaded down every single ice chest we had we dumped our bait out loaded every single ice chest we had and timmy actually left the beach to go ice everything down uh while we kept handling the carcass you know dude that, that i gotta say let, let me just let me just recap what you said man because that is I get goosebumps when I hear stories like that, Paco, because I, you know, for me, I'm at, you know, I'm just at a stage in my career, you know, financially and angling. Did I really admire the, the integrity of people? And I, I admire it so much because it's harder. Right. And what you guys did. So just to break this back down um, and, and I can, you know, I can testify this, all of the work to land a 14 foot hammerhead, th there's such a self, a, a self of accomplishment, right? You feel a self of accomplishment. You've got a 14 foot hammerhead. You're so proud of yourself. You put good drag. You got it in an hour, you know, in, in this situation, the moment, you know, it's dead. Mm -hmm. It's all gone. It's all gone. You know? It's like, it's, it's like as an angler, we feel, you know, so defeated. Who cares about the smiling in the picture? All right. That you, know, we, we don't want to look depressed necessarily. And I know it's worth a thousand words. I get it. But the thing is, man, you know, you could do what you want. Right. What you did though is 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 you did you you did something that's amazing, Paco. You first of all, your heart broke. You decided to go the exact other way and and be accountable, right? And not just do it for show, Paco. Right? Not just do it for show. You you guys, Timmy left the beach in in you know Padre Island. It's it's a tough beach to drive. You can't just drive on and off. You guys decided to leave the beach to get additional ice to to make sure this meat was preserved. Is that right? That's right. And then the very next day he contacted the uh, homeless shelter and they said, you absolutely bring it. And they took every bit of it, 400 pounds worth of it. No, uh, I, I mean, at any point, dude, um, see, the thing is, 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 you know, I know a lot of things run through our mind, right? And, and when those things run through our mind, it's the decisions that we make that really demonstrates our character, you know? So, you know, how much was it running in your mind, you know, the, the criticism you were going to receive? Well, man, you got to think I, I, I caught it at, 30 in the afternoon on a Saturday. Uh, oh, so, and, and like, you know, down there in pins, I mean, I've, you know, the whole way. So from fighting it, I already had a crowd. And then when, when it died and, and, and even reviving it and all, uh, or before it died, trying to revive it and all, uh, I mean, there was 50 people standing on land looking at us. So, you know, you knew, I knew the phones were going and the cameras were rolling and, and, and that's part of what, what was really, affecting you know my emotions was like yeah. man here i am i know i'm fixing to hit the spotlight with this catch and for what i mean it's dead you know what i mean so uh i've caught hundreds of sharks man uh tagged hundreds of them 
uh, and I've had three sharks die on me. And two of them were under six foot bulls that couldn't pull the weight. Um, and then this one. So, I want to point. I want to point out, Paco, that you knew every. You knew all of them. Right. And, and the good thing is you can count it on your one hand, too. And what that demonstrates is, is that you actually do care. Oh, yeah. We're not not you know, we're not knocking people, you know, harvest animal. Right. If it's legal, harvest animal, eat your meat. This is just how we choose to do it. And that's why, you know, I want to bring this up. Let me bring up an article, Paco, because I want to I want to take a look at what happens when someone is not accountable, when someone you know, hides in the shadows, leaves their mess behind for others to clean up. I want to bring that up. And then I want to kind of end, if we can, Paco, on maybe some advice you can give us. Let's bring up this article. Now, look at this, man. You know, and this is in Florida. Florida has it bad. In Texas, we have beaches. There's really no hotels. Most of the places, we don't have to deal with this. But someone here, Hammerhead Shark, washes up dead in St. Lucie County. Look at this. You know, so this is what happens. Massive hammerhead. Someone left this fish. They're probably, you know, rightfully nervous for the criticism, right? Yeah. We know the criticism is going to be there. We, you know, we know it's it's not easy to face criticism, but it is important because look at what they did. They left this up to other people to clean up. It makes us all look bad, you know. So, and look at it. There's a leader coming out of its mouth. This is horrible. Right. Yeah. Look at this hammerhead. This is a giant hammerhead. You can see here from these pictures. Let me go back up. Look at the look at the hotels. Look yeah. at this hotel. Look at the tourism, man. This is you know, this is what it's going to get our rights, you know, shut down faster, suspended faster. You know, although on one hand, I understand how scary it is, the criticism, the need for caution, Paco. Right. Because what we do, it's, it's kind of a public hot topic. Yeah. It is like hunting, like, you know, especially it's, it's getting even worse. I think nowadays with cancel culture and stuff. I was born and raised a hunter and fisher, but, um, th this is, this is sad, man. You so know, this what, is sad. Yeah. 100% brother. So like you said, I, I didn't do it for the fame. Uh, obviously I didn't want this fish to die. I didn't want to see it like that where, you know, thousand, you know, there, there was probably 50, 60 people standing there watching us, you know, harvest the meat. And they and they all had the, kind of the same question is, why are you guys going to eat that? Well, honestly, we're not. But I'm not going to let this meat just sit here when we can actually try to donate it to somebody that could use it. So that's what we did. But um, what I was going to get that is that down here, you, you do see that from time to time, a dead shark, you know, just laying there and people will just cut the jaws out and run, you know. And um, some people said, well, why didn't you, you know, the fish that big, it was probably a state record. Well, according to I IGFA measurements, it was somewhere around the state record of 1,032 pounds. So, yeah, could I have called some buddies and get a trailer to go down there and pick it up, go fishing and get it weighed and all? Probably, but I, I wasn't going to do that. Uh, either make By then, you know, it'd probably be hours and the meat would be spoiled. So, it's not about the fame. We took care of the meat, brother, and we donated it. So I love you, man. I mean, you know, I absolutely love you. I love it's not your success, by the way. I love your success. You've you've caught some it's just it's just your conduct, sir. Your conduct. I feel like you know the the goats and the people that are at the highest pinnacle of this game are the people you never hear about. Yeah, and that's right? a, you got me on this interview here, and I mean people don't know me other than that picture. You know, but do, I know you, man. And, and you know, and the, it, 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 I think that that's why I wanted you here, man. I mean, if there's anyone, any name that is so well respected, it's your name. You went through it. Now, if we can, Paco, let's go into something that's really important. Now, let's go into your advice. OK, now, first of all, there's probably only a handful of people that have even had the opportunity to hook up to a 14 foot hammerhead. I may have, I've lost the fish. I don't, you know, I don't know. I probably haven't. That was probably a foul hook sandbar. Who knows? But the thing is, dude, I need you to tell us, I need you to walk us through. Okay. This is hard. This is Texas. This is 600 yard drops. Okay. But you know, as well as I do. All right. Generally, if you're going to hook a hammer, you know, it's a hammer, yeah. right? There's usually nothing that even if it's a nine foot hammer, you know, it's a, I've always guessed hammers. If it's a hammer, um, except for one time. And it was, it was weird. It was an 11 foot hammer too, but it, it fought like a monster bull. I need to know what could you have done different? Okay. Because I don't hear a lot of things, quite frankly, you could have done different. What could you have done different to, to land that fish Paco? The only thing that I, that I wish I would have had, um, uh, and, and all my reels do have it now is I wish I would have gone 200 pound braid all the way. And the only reason I say that was to have been able to put a little bit more drag pressure right off the bat to try to slow it down. 
Uh, yes. Did that fish, could that fish have broken 150 pounds if I went full drag? Maybe. Um, but I, I now I don't know that. Um, it's funny, right? You hear people say, well, if you knew it was a hammer, you should have cut the line. Yeah, with 600. You know, seven hundred. That's th that's an automatic death trap. I mean, when I hear that, it's like, do yeah, you know what you're saying? It's like it's the fish is right there. By the time you, are, okay, yeah, you got a forty foot leader, you got cable in the hook, yes. mouth, you got six hundred yards of line, you know, for the turtles and dolphins and everything else to get wrapped up. So no, that's not an option for us. But uh, no, man, I, I I really think I I um, maybe two hundred pound braid would have had a little bit more of a you know advantage. Um, but man, I, I it was dumping line. I mean, it's hard to say, man. It's fourteen yeah, foot, you know. know. It, it 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 was night and day from the twelve footer. I mean, the twelve yeah. footer. I, you know, I I turned it around and man, it dumped probably hundred yards of line. I turned it around, <laughs> but oh, not that fourteen footer. <laughs> yeah, bro, I mean, I, I I had that that twelve footer on the beach in forty minutes. You know, I mean, and, and that was also five six hundred yards. I mean, it's night and day. It's you night had, and day, man. You had that two foot and a almost inch girth to it and it, it's totally different brother it's a different fish yeah, i've talked to a few guys you know oz i've talked to uh you know uh, uh the other guy from jetty rats and i it was a uh, over 13 foot as well and oz has got several 13s and i think one or two over 14 um it's, it's night and day once you get over that 13 and a half foot mark i mean it's just 13 mark i mean it's it's night and day so yeah i mean uh, you you can try to you know backseat driver it from the computer and say you should have done this you should have done that but i mean unless you hook a 14 footer and you don't say you land it uh, i know and then not to mention paco the emotions yeah. right it's so easy to criticize when you're on a computer looking at pictures but the emotion that goes along with landing a fish like that i mean it's like man versus fish i mean it's a lot of adrenaline you know so but i want to cover um what advice you gave because i you know i i've lived by that and i've heard this advice shared a lot, especially uh, in Florida, East Coast, Florida. Um, what Paco said, I thought was really important. He said, number one, you know, even he said he would wish 200 pound braid. So I believe you were more confident and going even higher on your drag. Even yeah. though I would argue 80, 90 pounds. I mean, that's, that's up there, dude, you know? So, but the thing that you mentioned that I think is really important, Paco, is the need to break these animals right out the gate. Yeah. Right. You got it. I've been told you got to do it right out the gate. Yeah. And, and a lot of the, the recommendations that I've heard is not. So when you go, you know, into strike, right. So you go into strike, you start figuring out what's going on. And then when you start going into full, you never go right up two thirds to full. You slowly go a little bit at a time on full, like a little bit, let it run a little bit more, let it run a little bit more, let it run. And then usually you know, the, the premise is it breaks their spirit. You can turn them. I've done that on, you know, a 12 foot fish, 11 foot fish, but never on, on the size that, that you're dealing with. Wait, so I think, go ahead. I'm at three quarter drag on the TRX and I'm at a third spool. I know, dude, that, I mean, you, 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 and you could only get away with that because you were not harnessed up. You could argue, right? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, you know, I, you know, I think the high drag coming out the gate is important, but tell us also Paco, like from the, you know, how did you donate this food, right? So, uh, you know, if anyone's watching, if this ever happens to, you're freaking out, you just lost a hammer, there's everyone around, you know you got to be accountable. What's the next step to take? Do you call your local food shelters? Do you ask their process? Tell me the next steps. Yeah, man. So so where, where we were, uh, like, you know, phone service isn't there. Uh, no. So we on just- On the dunes. Why on the, on the dunes, man? Yeah, Sometimes. I- you know, you, again, you know, we're doing, you know, two two thirty in the afternoon. I mean, it's, you know, not, it's hard to get a, a t even a text out. So, <laughs> uh, so we just decided, look, man, I mean, the best thing we can do is harvest the meat, get it, get it back to, to land. I mean, uh, back to town, ice it down and, you know, we'll deal with that. Uh, we, whether our, our goal was the homeless shelter, uh, which that was the outcome. But if not, we were just going to ask people, Hey, you know, we got some shark meat, you know, 
here you go. I mean, we just did not want to just dump everything into Dune or anything like that. So, so to reiterate, you basically, you took actions first, yeah. which I, again, I love and they ask questions later. Actions speaks louder than words. I always tell people this. So that's beautiful, man. So it was just more like preserve the meat, ice the meat. You'll worry about who to donate it Absolutely. later. You found out, um, but, but working with the, you know, the food, the food shelters was, was pretty easy process for you. Yeah, man, they were great, and I've, we've donated some, you know, deer meat and stuff uh, to them before, but never shark and never four hundred pounds of it, you know. So uh, we were we were almost shocked when they said we will take it all, and I was like, wow, okay. I was expecting them to say we'll take some, but they said we'll take it all, and I thought, all right. So, anyways, I, I actually reached out to them, man. About three or four days later, I reached out to them, and and uh, the guy said. Everybody was loving it, and I thought, "Wow!" <laughs> they were uh, liking the the shark meat. That, that's what he said, he dude. Said, when you're starving, anything sound, it tastes good. I'm just so saying. That, you're exactly, that's right. That's why I said. I mean, would we eat it? No, but right, man, right. It it need it, and they got the homeless shelter, shelter that was making food for hundreds of people, and, and where they, they wanted it, they wanted it. I mean, that's, that's that's what was cool. Is that he said we'll take all of it, and I thought, damn. And then Timmy went out there and just you know he there's a picture. uh out there that it's got Timmy, you know, on his truck with ice chest everywhere. And the guys rolling carts out full of, you know, uh, meat. And it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. So Timmy's one of the good ones, man. I absolutely love dude, that man. Good dude. He, uh, he, he won, uh, he won third on shark this year. Ah, by an inch, dude. Everyone was with all Happy. three winners this year was within an inch and a half, right? No, within three quarters of an inch. Oh my gosh. It was, it was not even, dude. Everyone's like, I should have pulled the tail. I should have, da, 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 da. it's like, you, Third, we're separated by a quarter inch. That's unbelievable, uh, unbelievable. This year, man, when he when he did that, and uh, I lost a good one this year, bro. And I I don't know. I just uh, it 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 was a fish. I just lost it. I mean, it was a good. So. Well, if you fish in Texas, you're gonna lose some fish, man. <laughs> those those frays are brutal. So just you, know, I want to put just one one more time. I want and I'll ask a little closing question, Paco. But you guys, yeah. you're looking at a man. You're looking at Paco. This is a man that's very, very well respected. Now, obviously, certain certain photo, you know, certain photos, certain catches, you know, the public's not going to do well with. But what you're seeing here is how we should act behind the scenes. Yeah, right? man. I, if if you're out there doing what we do, you know, we're not doing it so much for fame yeah we love pictures and stuff like that but our main number one concern is is the survival of the fish uh we do it for research you know that we tag a lot you know we do all that um is it fun absolutely if not we wouldn't be doing it but at the same time you know like the heart research institute they love land-based shark fishermen because they have hundreds or thousands of shark yeah. basically, basically they have thousands of em of employees that they don't wage on I've yeah. read the, I've, and I've read the studies, man. It is yeah. very, and, and you know what they say about uh, Texas anglers? We have one of the best, uh, I think it's a um, uh, survival rate. Not that they could really test that because it's not a sat tag, right? Um, but I, I think it was something like 96% of the sharks, of uh, the anglers that were in the Texas shark fishing rodeo survived. I mean, we got good anglers out here, Paco. You know that just because, you know, they're, they're not so flashy. I mean, do you remember Stephen Kennedy? Yeah. I miss him, man. How how is he? Have you, is he coming back uh, fishing or what's going on? Oh man, I haven't heard from him in a long time. You know what's gonna you know what's gonna break my heart, man? Losing Ron Richmond. I don't I don't think he's gonna be fishing full time next and year. He's personally, you know, like you said earlier, man. You, you look at me as one of the goats. Well, I don't look at myself like that, but I, you know, I look at many others like that, and Ron's one of them. I mean, that guy is I mean, that guy is a legend, bro. You know him and Oz and. You know, there's many other ones out there that just they're they're uh, they're great for the sport, man. Yourself, uh, there's just so many to name, you know, across the damn world. Uh, but down here in our neck of the woods, man, Ron Ron Richmond is something else, bro. He's gonna be uh, he's gonna be one that that uh, the shark industry is gonna definitely miss. Oh, I love him, man. You know, he he pushed me to to tag more sharks, conserve. You know, I mean, we got it down, Paco. I mean, we could catch land, tag a shark in in probably ten minutes. You know, yeah. that's, that's from hook set. I mean, we, we just, it's just getting to the point where it's just too easy. Sorry man. about that. It's okay. I love it. Well, so man, you know, I appreciate well, your time, Paco. Um, you know, we're, we've been doing this about 34 minutes. Uh, I think we may be doing a live Q &A on, session on uh, Facebook, um, land-based shark fishing page. So you guys uh, go to land-based shark fishing on Facebook. We may do that. Are you still with me, Paco? Can you hear me? I just I'm not sure what happened here, brother. I got a phone call and 
Can you hear me or no? And uh, all right. Well, I don't think Paco can hear me, but my one of my last questions was what, I, what does it take to be such a winner? But I think we're gonna have to wait for the live Q and A. You can't hear me. Uh, can't hear me, can you, Paco? No, he's not. You guys, I appreciate you. Check out our website when you can, SpartanTackle.com. As always, guys, stay tuned for some good content coming up. The most trusted source of land-based shark fishing. We'll see you.